everyone. Thank you for joining us. So as we're noticing right now, um, a lot of instructors in the current moment uh, are finding it hard to connect with their students, um, or maybe even to understand uh, what their students might be learning or taking away from their courses and from their assigned readings. For many students who might be accessing their course materials online and completing the assigned readings that um, instructors are signing on the web, this whole experience can seem quite isolating. Um, the kinds of discussions that they have around readings um, or sharing of analyses that they might um, be used to doing in the physical classroom obviously is not taking place in the same way as they're reading online. Um, however, um, there are ways to help students learn together and to let them know that they're not participating in these classes or just completing the work um, for these classes alone, that they're not the only ones um, doing this work. Open tools like Hypothesis um, can actually provide ways to change this experience so that students can collaboratively read, so that they can discuss and um, annotate text, regardless of whether the text is um, a textbook, whether it's an article, a lecture, a slide, um, or any other web-based source that you can find on the internet. Hypothesis, for those of you who don't know, is a social annotation tool that runs on a browser and lets anyone um, students, instructors, others share their thoughts on what they are reading. Um, even if these people aren't in the same room, um, aren't on the same video call, aren't in the same time zone, um, they can annotate text. Um, and I'll note that these annotations aren't restricted to text alone. Um, people can add images, hyperlink, videos, audio files, um, and embed all of these elements um, in the annotation layer and complement the text that they're reading. I'll um, share a few examples um, of these annotations during the demo very soon. I also wanted to note that um, with Hypothesis, students can actually access the text that they're reading asynchronously. Um, they can be reading uh, on a Monday or a Sunday, but still be able to um, use the tool, read the text, see comments that um, their classmates might be making. They can highlight sections of the text that they find most interesting. They can break down parts of the text to ask questions, um, or they can even collaborate with other students, um, hashtag, use hashtags to make their points. Annotations can be made in public or they can be made in private groups if students want to work together um, as a smaller unit um, or if they want to take notes for just themselves. Overall, um, we found that this kind of work can actually improve students' comprehensions of text and help them engage in more meaningful ways with the content versus just skimming over the content, which we know that um, might tend to happen, especially with online texts. Um, and as an instructor, you can actually use Hypothesis to place prompts in the text, um, to disperse reading questions throughout the assigned text. Um, we think that this in combination with other comments that you might find um, on a text will actually encourage the student to consider what they're reading a little more deeply than they would otherwise. Um, and it also gives students um, an insight into the instructor and their fellow classmates' critical thinking processes. How is someone arriving at a particular point that they're making? Um, can I think about ways to also derive that same um, thought when I'm reading the text? Um, annotations like these can also serve as a tool to archive thoughts, notes, um, and more as students are moving from one text um, to another that's been assigned on the syllabus. Um, they can export these notes and save them for future reference. They can save them um, and refer to them when they're learning or preparing for other assignments um, that might be uh, required for the class. I think what's needed right now more than ever is a sense of connectedness. And we hope that with annotations, with marginalia, um, we can use these as a tool to revive conversations and to engage with one another, even if we're not able to um, be together in the same classroom and can only do so virtually. So I'll just pause uh, briefly and I will um, share my screen to show you a few examples of um, annotations that I've been talking about. So here I have um, just a book on press books and initially it looks like just any other book, but I'll note that when I click on this little hypothesis extension um, in my browser um, and give the page a second to reload, 
suddenly I see a lot of highlights in the text. I see a lot of annotations in the text. Um, I can actually click on an annotation right here. I can click on the word Medica that has been highlighted um, to display an annotation here. Um, this is the hypothesis sidebar, and I can also use the um, arrow keys here to toggle, to hide, and um, show the sidebar, or to also resize it. So this first annotation here I see is, in this case, Steele, who might be the instructor for this text. Um, he's given me a little background information about the author, Lorreen Medica. Um, I can also click on the Show All Annotations tool to see um, all of the 17 annotations that have been made on this particular book. So if I click on it um, and I scroll further down um, the text, I see here that um, the instructor has actually added um, an image. Um, it's the cover of New Goose, which is one of um, Medica's books. And as I'm going along, um, I see that um, there's a lot more information that I can include, um, or I've seen the instructor include in this case. Um, here, um, Steele has actually linked out to a Wikipedia article about um, Jonathan Williams, who was a uh, Medica's publisher. So I can click on this link um, and be taken to a page with more information about him if I wanted. Um, but I also see here that there's a lot of reading prompts. Um, here, uh, there's the poem Black, uh, Black Hawk, uh, Black Hawk Held. Um, and while I'm reading the poem, I can see that Steele is actually prompting me to think a little bit about the poem itself. It's a two paragraph poem, but Steele has come up with a number of different ways to make this a little more interesting. Um, he's including a photo of Black Hawk here, um, but then he's also asking questions like, how, I, how would I find um, Black Hawk's position on property? How can I paraphrase that? Is it reasonable? Um, so even with this small um, two paragraph poem, um, this instructor has come up with a number of ways to make me think about it in uh, a little more detail and with a little more thought than I um, might have originally. As I keep going, I see that Steele has even included um, an audio file here. Um, he's uh, included uh, a reading of uh, Nidikar's poem Foreclosure by her itself. Um, as a student, it can make me um, think about Nidikar's own um, reading of Black Hawk Held. Um, I can maybe even compare and contrast how I read the poem versus how um, Nidikar is reading her own poem, Foreclosure. And going along, I see that there are a lot more comments in here, a lot more reading questions that um, the instructor has included. Um, and finally, coming to the end, I see that there's even some replies to comments. So there's a video here that Steele's linked out to, but there might be other replies um, from him or from other students if I keep going. Um, I also just wanted to share briefly that while this is a book on um, press books, um, which has hypothesis enabled, hypothesis can also be used on other types of content. So I have here a journal article about um, uh, psychobiotics and the gut. Um, and I can click on the sidebar here to see a lot of different annotations. Um, annotations um, for this particular article have a, have a particular hashtag. So it might be students in the class Bio590 who are reading this article and sharing their thoughts. Um, in this case here, um, I see that uh, this is a group assignment of Melville's Benito Serino. Um, and most of the annotations here, most of the 44 annotations here um, are by students, students who are reading the text and completing this group project assignment. So I think they're uh, using the hashtags to indicate what groups they're in. So there's a lot of different ways that um, you can actually use hypothesis, not restricted just to um, books on press books, but also articles um, and other kinds of assignments on WordPress sites um, or even in your LMS. Um, I'm going to pause very briefly and turn things over to Amy Song. So we've spent a little bit of time just looking at um, annotations in Hypothesis, um, but Amy will actually demonstrate how you can go ahead creating um, an annotation and switching between a public group and a private group. So Amy, over to you. Thanks, Aparva. Hi, I'm Amy. I am the support specialist at Pressbooks, and I will be showing you how you can use this in your instance of Pressbooks. So let me share my screen really quickly. Okay. So to adjust the uh, sorry the, to adjust the hypothesis settings in 
in Pressbooks, you need to be the book administrator. Um, and if you are, find a book that you want. Um, so in this case, I chose University Fix Volume 2. And I can go into settings and you will see that there's a hypothesis option. So this page will allow you to customize um, how you would like to use hypothesis. So the hypothesis settings up here will allow you to decide how hypothesis shows up um, on your browser or on any person's browser who's using the book. Um, so the content settings going forward is where you can decide for which parts of your book you would want hypothesis to show. So in this case, I have chosen when you first enter this, when you first enter a new book, you won't see any check marks. I've just gone ahead and check marked parts, chapters, front, front matter, and back matter. Um, and then down here, you can customize. So if you only want, uh, if you want to add it for chapters, but only certain chapters, this is where you would input that information. So once you're happy, you can click save changes. And now you're ready to go. So if you actually visit your book, and go into a chapter. I'm a chemist, I was a chemistry major, so this is kind of fun for me. So as a perva said, I'm sorry if it's like a broken record, I'm a perva that say most of this stuff. So as you can see, I've already left some annotations, but this works in a way where you have to anchor on to a certain piece of text first. So you have to say, oops, so you have to highlight to be able to annotate. So now I can click annotate and add um example and i can add in different tags science and as you can see i've already used this in a previous annotation so it shows up and annotation <laughs> boom okay so now this is where it gets really fun because you have a variety of options from here so what's so cool about this is that you can share this either to yourself or to the public so if I post this to myself, I would have to be logged in as myself on Hypothesis for this to show up. But if I share this to public and post to public, now anyone can access. If anyone comes to this page and this book is public, anyone can open up Hypothesis and see this annotation, which is really cool because if students from all around the world are seeing this one big textbook that's like boomed, then they will all be able to see this really useful annotation. So now there's a variety of components that makes this really cool. So as you can see, I already have a picture down here. Um, oops, I'm going to reply to it and add in a picture. So you can add a picture in from a link. So if I do this and go here and click the picture toggle and add in physics, now I have a picture with a caption, which is cool. And then if I re reply again, I can copy and paste the link of a YouTube video and post there as well. And what's cool is that it'll play automatically in the browser. So you don't even have to exit the page to be able to see this. And another part that's really cool about this, as a Perva said, is that you can cram so much in here because this box receives HTML, not just plain text. So if you click on this um, little question mark, it'll tell you how you can format this to your liking. So if you want to create a variety of different paragraphs with different headings, you'll be able to use HTML to code this into this text box. Similarly, you can also, if you know LaTeX, then you can also use LaTeX to format your math equations in here, which are all really cool features that, that, allow, this, that allow Hypothesis to be used for a variety of different subjects and topics and anything that people may need. So those are some basic functionalities of how this works. So now there's a few couple more features that makes Hypothesis stand out so much. Um, personally, what I like is how neat Hypothesis is, um, just as like a personal anecdote. I just think the way that it's laid out and the color and all the different toggles, they're all so um, clean and it makes navigating around it really easy, even, even if there is so many things to do with it. So in this case, say you are a professor or a teacher and you have multiple sections of the class, but you don't want the public annotation to page to get crowded or you want students in one class or another class to be sharing amongst themselves, you're able to add a private group. So I can say science block one. Say that's a class that I have. I can create this group and now I can copy this link and send it to any person in this class or whoever I want to allow access to science block one. 
And once they do so, if I exit out of here, I will end up back on this page. And now you can see science block one has been created. So anyone who's been shared that link can now annotate in this page and this page only, which is really cool because it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be public for everyone to see, but if students are studying for an exam and it's something that they might benefit from, then that one class can use it. So that's a way that you can um, go back and forth between different private groups. And then there's just a few more things. Um, this is really cool because this allows you to be either be able to see or not see annotations. And that way, if you want to read the book at piece, you don't even have to open this. You can just keep it closed with that little eye off, right? Um, and then this allows you to make page notes. So as you can see for each block, you can add a page note. Um, which is convenient because if you don't want to, if you want to add a note for the whole page, but not necessarily for a single line of text, you shouldn't have to highlight just the, you know, the top part and just randomly put a note there. You should be able to have an entire dedicated section where you can add as many general notes as you want. So those are all the basic functionalities. The last part, as Steele had mentioned, which is probably the coolest part about, um, uh, that Steele had mentioned to me, while I was learning about this is the fact that you can share this. So what's really, it's like such a simple button, but what I think is so, as a student, what I would have really benefited from using a tool like this is the fact that if you were, if you can share this, it'll take you say like two students, a student wrote something really profound in a textbook and it's really useful. Someone else who sees this and thinks that it's useful can copy and paste this link and send it to anyone. And it will take them directly to this page and open this exact annotation so that you don't have to scavenge the entire book for it, which I think is really useful. So those are all the basic functionalities of Hypothesis. If anyone has any questions, let me know. Thanks so much, Amy. Um, I also just wanted to say uh, briefly while we're still recording that um, there's a lot of really useful presentations about um, Hypothesis generally, about um, how you can specifically use Hypothesis um, to create assignments or to uh, further engage your students in classes. Um, and I'll drop a few links to those presentations. One is by Steele um, in the chat here, so you folks can reference it and we'll share this afterwards. Um, I'll also note that the Hypothesis team has a lot of very, very useful resources for educators, um, whether you're an instructor or a student on their website. So I'll also drop in a few links um, to these resources here for your reference. Um, and with that, um, I will just pause the recording to see if we have any questions.